Thank you very much for joining me on this Monday. Meteorologist Brian Shields, I want to get right to it. What uh, we've been talking about together the last few days, that area there that is slowly trying to develop but it is still very weak. Now, the weaker this area stays, the better chance it has to move into the Caribbean. And it's looking more and more likely that this will be either very close or just move into the Caribbean. Not necessarily as a big time system. This one is tricky. This time of year, it is rare to have systems way out here kind of make that long trek journey. There's lots of fronts to come down. Point being, uh, the atmosphere is very dynamic this time of year it's a little trickier. It's, it is tougher for me to try to figure out what's going to happen four, five, six, seven days from now. So I uh, just like to let you know everything I'm kind of feeling or seeing about this uh, system. So here it is again, not well organized and it's continuing to really just track off to the uh, west. And we're going to see that trend as we go over the next few days. Now, hopefully there's good news out of this because we need to really get some rain in some spots. So I hope it stays weak and brings in some rain. Uh, but let me show you what we're seeing. Again, this is is what I've been watching. These are the computer models. All of this, of course, trekking off to the west. I've been watching the fronts, and these are these are models. These aren't people. Of course, people make the computers, but uh, those models are trying to read the atmosphere. So I see if they match up with what's going on in the environment. So I'm looking at everything uh, behind the scenes for you. But overall, the models were more like this a couple days ago. Now they're closer uh, to us in the Caribbean. Remember Lee. Lee made a curve, but remember Philippe? Philippe stayed weaker and didn't make that curve and that rolled into the uh, Caribbean. So point being, all of us uh, need to really keep an eye on this, especially from Puerto Rico around the Horn as we work our way down toward even Trinidad and Tobago, St. Lucia, Barbados, St. Vincent, the Grenadines, Grenada North, through Montserrat, St. Kitts and Nevis, Dominica. We're, we're keeping an eye on this. We're in monitor mode. What I mean by that monitor mode means uh, watching out for this. It uh, doesn't mean we need to really do anything other than spread the awareness. So thank you for sharing uh, this channel just to get the word out about safety in case this system really wraps up. The track and strength of this is going to be very uncertain and I believe it's going to be like Philippe in the sense it stays uncertain the whole way through. So I'm gonna just track it day by day for you to give you that uh, correct information. So here's the Caribbean, and let me still show you this difference from the European to the uh, American model. And by the way, I wanna show you developing a hurricane in the Eastern Pacific. Still the blocker here to the north of it, the big blue age, that's holding like we've been talking about for the last four to five days. So that's on track. So it keeps this area moving to the west. Now let me take you out in time on the European model. And historically, the European model is the best model out there. It's not always right though. Uh, but uh, again, it has it working its way to the west as we work our way into Thursday. This is Thursday morning. Now the a European model keeps this weaker. So the European model continues to work off toward the west and it has it a weaker system that would bring rain late week to the Caribbean. Here's one of those fronts that will try to turn it. Now, if it stays weaker though, it's more difficult for a weaker system to kind of feel the front and move to the north. There's a lot of science behind that. Something that is spinning a lot really wants to go to the north and it finds a way to go to the north. But since this may be weaker, it may not feel that front, so to speak, and just make its way into the Caribbean. This would be Friday into Saturday. This area right in here, you see this green shading here in the Eastern Caribbean, that would be the system. This actually would be a good news scenario, bringing rain, but not the threat of a hurricane but uh, using a lot of caution because I want to show you the water temperatures in a second. So this would be by the time we get into really late Friday into Saturday, and then here's another front and it would be a wait and see if it kind of feels this front and works its way up to the north. At some point it should make a little bit of a curve at least, but as of now watching the fronts in the European model saying, hey, this is going to be a weaker system, so it's going to drive into the Caribbean. And that is the scenario that I would lean to by everything I'm seeing in the environment, especially because it has not gotten better developed over the last day or so. Now, the American model, uh, latching onto this front, seeing everything kind of similar, but the American model has this develop a little bit more. So, as I was mentioning, if it gets a little bit stronger quicker, it would feel some of these fronts a little bit more and have the inclination just it will want to go a little bit more to the north. So this is by the time we get into Thursday. Now, 
both scenarios, they are still plausible at this point. But you see the American model seems to be kind of the one that's taking a bigger curve. That would keep almost all the action away from the Caribbean. It would develop this into a tropical storm, potentially a hurricane. This would be by the time we get into Saturday this weekend. And then you see a miss. It would start to feel this front in curve to the north. And of course, always keeping an eye on our friends in Bermuda down the road. But with that said, the American model was over here a couple days ago. Now it's over here. That's a trend. And the European model is over here. So the trend has been back toward the European model. So again, I'm leaning toward the European model. Now, the strength is always a concern. Anything that even comes to the Caribbean, even if it looks like it's going to be weak, I'm really, really monitoring everything in the environment above us and what's going on below. Of course, we have the very warm water temperatures. This is updated about 30 degrees Celsius, so about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Super warm in the water this time of year. It's been running above average all season into the uh, fall. So again, always a concern uh, uh, with the uh, water temperatures when something runs close or into the Caribbean. Now, most of the models going out in time bring this area to tropical storm strength. Uh, the European models keeping it on the weaker side though the models have been trending a little bit weaker a couple days ago if you look at a couple videos ago mo a lot of them had to go into this yellow shading which would be a category one hurricane not really seeing that at this point which is more of a reason again uh, at least uh, adds to the reasoning that this would stay a little bit weaker and move into the Caribbean I'm really hoping this brings us some welcome rain at this point uh, but I'll monitor it day by day but thank you for sharing this channel just in case this really flares up I appreciate Appreciate you getting the word out and sharing this information. Now, I'll get into this blob in a second. Been watching some heavier rain near uh, Colombia, scattered showers and storms as expected near Belize and Honduras, a little more active in Central America, spotty showers anywhere from Haiti near Jamaica, back through Cuba and the Bahamas. We've had so, some action around, but you see again, more of it Central America. This is where it's gonna be very active. And of course, in the Eastern Caribbean, all eyes off to the east to see if this does really try to develop into a tropical storm or a hurricane or just bring some plain old rain. But an old front keeping the moisture, helping to keep the moisture around. Panama, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Mexico over toward the Yucatan, Belize, Honduras, Roatan. We're gonna see that high chance of rain today and tomorrow. This this is tomorrow. Spotty showers, Cayman Islands, Jamaica, Haiti, the DR, get toward Puerto Rico. In a hit or miss shower, Eastern Caribbean, Trinidad and Tobago, Northern Venezuela, uh, Guyana, spotty shower. But again, more of the action here, possibility of some flooding here. And then I'll show you the development of a hurricane in a moment. As we work our way into Wednesday, it's going to be a wait and see on what happens with that. So again, uh, as I mentioned yesterday, it would take about a day or two to really fine tune that. Still in that time frame. Hopefully by tomorrow, I know exactly what may be a uh, coming uh, at us in the Caribbean. The next name on the list is Tammy. It's not a guarantee this gets a name at this point, since again, it's been struggling to really uh, organize, which is good. As we get into the uh, Eastern Pacific side, it does look like Norma is forming out there. And this is an issue. Now, this uh, heads up, even in the uh, as you get toward Texas, because, well, actually, that'd be good news if this brings some moisture to Texas. But the track of this is pretty uncertain because it hasn't developed yet. You see the big blob here, but it hasn't uh, really developed yet. So the modeling has been all over the place, kind of trying to bring this into the uh, southwest uh, uh, coast of Mexico. Others trying to bring it up a little bit closer to the Baja. And that's because since it hasn't developed yet, it's hard to tell how much of a tug it's going to get from some of these fronts. But you see by Wednesday, this is going to be wrapping up quickly into a stronger tropical storm than eventually a hurricane. So please, my friends in Mexico, spread the word about this, especially because I'm not sure yet where this is going to come on shore. Could come on where Lydia was, but there are some trends that take this more to the north, heads up. And then if that works inland, if it's more to the north, my friends in Texas, this this would mean a better chance of rain down the road. So in Texas, where we've had extreme drought, there is a chance, not a guarantee, but a chance that some of this moisture eventually feeds into Texas. But again, in the short term, keeping a very close eye on Mexico. So a uh, very dynamic pattern uh, this time of year as well in the uh, Eastern Pacific. So watching out for that, eventually Mexico, and then potentially some rain into Texas. Trinidad and Tobago, we're going to see a 40% chance of spotty showers and storms over by uh, Port of Spain, 30% chance in Grenada. Uh, my friends in St. Vincent of the Grenadines, a 30% chance. St. Vincent of the Grenadines, of course, we're watching as well to the east to keep an eye on the system that is trying to develop 
at least a little bit, but the rain chance overall staying kind of kind of limited. 30 to 40 percent chance the next couple days in St. Lucia. Barbados, same thing, a 30 to 40 percent chance. 30 percent chance in Martinique. So this is very kind of isolated passing shower stuff. Uh, Dominica, as we work our way back toward Guadeloupe, 20 to 30 percent chance of a shower. 40 percent chance as we get back toward Jamaica. Again, the last couple days, if you've had a storm, yeah, a couple of those have been on the uh, strong side. 40 percent chance through the Cayman Islands. Some of those spotty showers that I was showing you earlier in this video. Spotty showers and thunderstorms as well as we work our way back through Puerto Rico. And about a 30 percent chance U.S. Virgin Islands and British Virgin Islands. Bermuda. Now Bermuda with that front that moved off the United States this action is mainly tonight. We have a higher chance of rain tonight, overnight in Bermuda through early tomorrow as that front zips by. 20 to 30 percent chance Antigua and Barbuda, 20 to 30 percent chance St. Kitts and Nevis and Montserrat, and a 20 percent chance as we go over the next few days in Anguilla. Watching off to the east, of course, for that developing system. Same thing, St. Martin, uh, Seba, Stacia. 50, uh, 50 to 60 percent chance of some showers and storms in Belize. As I mentioned, Central America that rain chance is higher. That forecast is panning out right on cue. 40 to 50% chance Yucatan and Mexico kind of active. Bahamas just watching these fronts moving by. So every now and then we get waves of some showers. Turks and Caicos, 20 to 30% chance. Passing shower or thunderstorm in Haiti today. And we're looking at about a 40% chance in the Dominican Republic over the next few days. 40% chance in Cuba, same thing. Watching those fronts around, 10 to 20% chance. That's it in Aruba. Curacao, about a 10 percent chance of a spotty shower. So that means mainly dry. And again, the higher chance of rain, Costa Rica, 80 percent chance the next couple days. About a 30 percent chance today in northern Venezuela, 20 percent chance in Guyana, and a limited chance of a passing shower as we get into a Suriname. So watching this area very carefully. Again, it has not strengthened. So uh, more of a shift to the west. And that's what I'm that's what I'm seeing with it. It's going to be near the Caribbean Friday and Saturday. And we're in mon monitor mode. So we're just watching it, kind of spreading the word about it, seeing if it does curve, watching that strength very carefully, watching the wind shear uh, above, watching the water temperatures below. 45 days left in the hurricane season. I'll try to go through the comments, of course, you know I always do throughout the day. Thank you for building this weather community and taking the time to actually subscribe to the channel. I hope you have a good rest of your day.